Hello my royal lovelies, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my home today. I want to talk to you about the British Royal Family and Remembrance Sunday here in the UK. So without further ado, let's just get stuck straight into it. So Remembrance Sunday, if you didn't know, is a national opportunity to remember the service and sacrifice of all those that have defended our freedoms and protected our way of life in all wars, but I suppose most notably uh, World War I or World War II, but it's for everyone that served. We remember the armed forces and their families from Britain and the Commonwealth, so not just Britain, the wider Commonwealth as well. The vital role played by emergency services and those who've lost their lives as a result of conflict or terrorism. So why the Cenotaph? So the Cenotaph is located very, very close um, to Downing Street. It's literally in the middle of a road. I've walked down that street and I've seen it myself. So on a normal day, that is traffic going both ways. Um, so you cannot just kind of walk up to the Cenotaph, but it is the focal point. It is the focal point and centre of our national memorial services. The National Service of Remembrance is held at the Cenotaph in Whitehall on Remembrance Sunday and provides the nation with a physical reminder of all those who have served and sacrificed, with British and Commonwealth soldiers, sailors, airmen and women represented, together with members of the emergency services and civilians, ensuring that no one is forgotten. Members of the royal family pay tribute alongside members of the cabinet, the opposition party leaders, former prime ministers, as well as the mayor of London and other ministers. Representatives of the armed forces, uh, fishing fleets and merchant air and navy will also be there, as well as faith communities and high commissioners of Commonwealth countries. So everybody is involved. Nobody is excluded from this kind of centrepiece of remembrance. Now, I'm going to recall the events of the day regarding the royals. So the first sight of royals was actually William and Catherine, the Prince and Princess of Wales, arriving by car en route to the Cenotaph. Um, so I'm just looking at a picture now. They were pictured through the car window. There was a little bit of light rain and drizzle on the day. And Catherine looks absolutely gorgeous in this car photo. I can only see a little bit of, uh, of William, um, but she looks absolutely gorgeous and looks to me uh, like she was wearing a pair of the late Queen's diamond and pearl earrings. Um, there's a, quite a lot of the photos that came back of the day. Now remember, Catherine and Camilla and some of the other royal party, including the Duke, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester uh, and Sir Timothy Lawrence, and um, the Duchess of Edinburgh, Sophie, were on the balcony. Remember, it's November, it's very harsh lighting, and I have to say the one thing that struck me as soon as I saw the photographs and images coming back was what bad lighting it was on all of them. In particular, I have to say, Catherine came off looking a little bit worse for wear. Um, I have not seen Catherine looking that tired for a very, 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 very long time, if ever. She looked like she had the roughest, toughest night possible the night before. I don't know what was up, whether the kids, there was something wrong with the with the royal children, or whether or not she just had a late night, couldn't sleep. William and Catherine could have had an argument. I mean, who knows, but she looked tired. She looked like she could have just gone for a nap. Lots of people said she was looking very sombre. Well, she always looks sombre. I mean, all of the royals on the balcony and attendants uh, on the ground as well always have that air of um, solemnity about them. They are sombre. It's a sombre occasion. So smiling and laughing and joking is not the order of the day. And of course, that always has an effect on the face. It always kind of makes a face lighter and brighter. But the grey November weather, the rain, the drizzle, the harsh lighting of November, um, it just didn't do Catherine any favours this time. I mean, you know, we could be cruel and go back and compare, you know, how she was for her first balcony appearance uh, for Remembrance Sunday compared with now. But that, you know, the passage of time, people age, uh, you know, myself included, if I look back on photos from, you know, over 10 years ago, 
I look different. Everyone does. It's aging. It's it's the natural process. But I think there was something in particular that I think was up with Catherine. She does look very thin. And I did look at her out on the balcony and I did think how thin she looks. And um, dare I go out on a limb and say that I think she looks the thinnest that she has. She's always been slender. Uh, you know, her body, her choice, that's, you know, naturally, I think, how she is. But she's always looked slender. Um, but she looked really thin, very, very slight, uh, a very slight figure on that balcony. And, you know, the what she was wearing was impe impeccable, absolutely impeccable. Looked gorgeous with the kind of military nod, the poppies, uh, the brooch, we'll get into those details in a moment, you know, the hat, the hair in an elegant chignon. She looked gorgeous with everything. But like I say, I think something was amiss with Catherine. She just looked tired. I don't know whether or not, you know, her latest programme of engagements had taken its toll. Uh, like I said, she could have had a sleepless night. She could have had a bad night up with one of the kids. But she didn't look particularly, not herself. She did not look herself. And I know some people online have been very, very cruel when it comes to those set of photographs that came out. I don't think it's anything, you know, that's anything particularly bad. I just think it's one of those occasions. We all have moments where we just don't look our best. We just look tired. <laughs> and, you know, we've been overworked or we've been stressed or kids or animals or whatever whatever has gone on i mean you know don't even discount the fact that william and catherine could have had an argument uh the night before who knows i mean maybe william was tending to his rose garden who knows uh i have no, i have no idea what was going on but she did not look her best i have to say um camilla looked really really good i thought um you know she looked really i always love camilla's hats her millinery is absolutely uh, impeccable. Um, but yes, so it is customary for royal ladies, uh, of course, the exception of Princess Anne. So she does go on the ground, she does wear uniform, uh, and she does lay the wreath herself. But it is customary for, for example, a queen consort to have a wreath laid by an equerry, which is what happened with Queen Camilla. So don't think don't don't listen to anyone online. Camilla wasn't snubbing anything by not laying it herself. That is customary and normal to do. Also, notably absent was the Duke of Kent. Now, it was always planned for the Duke of Kent to be on the balcony. Uh, he would normally lay the wreath himself, but he had an equerry do it uh, on this occasion. Now, like I say, he wasn't in attendance, and the reason cited by the palace was mobility issues. So he's obviously struggling with a mobility impairment. I think it's kind of, you know, episodic, if you like. So he was supposed to attend on the balcony, but could not attend on the day. Uh, but other than that, I have no health updates on the Duke of Kent. Just in case you were wondering, the balcony, the building that the balcony is attached to is the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. And of course, is right opposite uh, looking down on the cenotaph. Uh, so Camilla's reef closely resembled the reef produced for the Queen Mother. And of course, this is the first time that we have had a consort's, um, a Queen consort's reef being laid since the late Queen Mother, of course, was married to George VI. Um, unlike King Charles and other members of the royal family, who wore one simple poppy on their uniforms, Catherine added several of the flowers to her outfit to pay tribute to those who lost their lives in the world wars and other conflicts. So there is no official set um, amount of poppies that any royal lady or royal gentleman has to wear. It's entirely up to the individual. Her late majesty used to wear five and it was believed that was to represent all of the forces of which she is head of. Um, sometimes people choose to wear one, two, three um, and the reasons are kind of little known. However, it is believed that Catherine's great-grandmother had three brothers who were all killed in action during World War One. So perhaps it's a little bit of a nod 
uh, and paying respect to those members of the family who were lost. Uh, as I said before, um, the Queen, the former Queen used to wear, Her Late Majesty used to wear f a cluster of five poppies. A two minute silence is then observed. Now, most notably, Big Ben, or rather uh, the tower that houses Big Ben, because Big Ben is just the bell, uh, the Elizabeth Tower. Um, basically, you'll know it as the big massive clock in London. That was bonging. It was back bonging for the first time after, I think it's been about seven years of restoration. So the bongs are back and it was nice to hear it bonging again. Uh, it was the real bongs, not ones that have been sort of piped in for effect. Uh, so it was nice to hear that. That marked um, the sort of uh, the beginning and, and end of the two minutes, well, the start of the two minutes silence. So the nation fell silent in remembrance. Uh, and then it was time for the royal party and the equerries, if there was one needed, to lay the wreaths. So the king's wreath, got a few details about that, uh, had 41 open style poppies mounted on black leaves with ribbon and bow using the colours of the king's racing silk, scarlet, purple and gold. It is traditional that the sovereign's reef is edged in black leaves. So, um, just a bit of information about that. Queen Camilla, the Princess of Wales, the Duchess of Edinburgh, Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence and the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester watched the service, as I said, from the Commonwealth and Development Office. Queen Camilla's reef was laid by an equerry on her behalf. The reef itself was designed to be similar to one uh, laid or created for Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Prince William's reef featured the three plumes from the Prince of Wales insignia and was tied with a Welsh red ribbon. And he, he is wearing the red collared version of the blues and royals uniform. Of course, Catherine, as I said, watched the service from the balcony and she wore, if you're wondering what the little brooch was, it was the Fleet Air Arm brooch on her coat and she was announced as Commodore in Chief of the Fleet Air Arm in August. But after the reefs are laid, the Royal Party go back into the Commonwealth office and then everyone else lays their reefs and then there are processions. Now, Princess Anne went back out and was, uh, I think she was positioned on Horse Guards Parade. I've walk walked there as well. That's where the traditional uh, King's birthday, Troop in the Colour, takes place normally. And uh, Princess Anne was on a podium, like a little pedestal, and she was saluting uh, the war veterans uh, who were trooping past her. So that must have been uh, quite a sight to behold. It wasn't the only remembrance event that has been taking place over the last few days. There was also a, um, a festival of remembrance at the Royal Albert Hall that also included a statue unveiling of the late Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, the event was hosted by Claire Balding. As I've said, uh, the King and Queen unveiled statues of Elizabeth II and Prince Philip as they arrived for the Royal British Legion Festival of Remembrance. The life-sized bronzes commemorating the late Queen and her husband's dedication to the concert hall were installed as part of its 150th anniversary. So not to be confused with the statue that is going to become a permanent national focus uh, of remembrance of Her Late Majesty, uh, which will not be for a number of years yet. Uh, so this is this is not that one. Uh, the king appeared emotional as he looked up at the statue of his late mother. Now, I do think it's a very good likeness. The one that was unveiled in Canada, let's just say it left a little bit to be desired. Um, they were later ac accompanied at the festival by nine other members of the royal family, including the Prince and Princess of Wales, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, the Princess Royal and Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence. It's really good to see him uh, being sort of mentioned more. Um, of course, he's always been by Princess Anne's side, uh, but nice to see him taking a bit more, a bit more of the limelight, I should say. Uh, also, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester and the Duke of Kent were in attendance. Uh, also, the Prime Minister and other important uh, people. So, I have to say, compare the photograph that comes 
out of the Festival of Remembrance of Catherine with the one on Remembrance Sunday Day. They are like chalk and cheese. So it leads me to think that there was a bad night. Uh, you know, I don't think this is something where, oh, suddenly, you know, um, Catherine's, you know, aged about 10 years in, in a couple of days. That has not happened. Clearly, something was amiss at Adelaide Cottage. Um, yes. Uh, so, other tributes at the festival included the bereaved who have lost loved ones through military service. Uh, there was also tributes to the Windrush generation and their contribution to the British Armed Forces, marking the 75th anniversary of the Empire Windrush's arrival in the UK. Um, so there were plenty of things going on with the British Royal Family for Remembrance Day. Now, some people again were saying, uh, <laughs> has Prince William, the Prince of Wales, got some kind of time machine? Or does he travel at warp speed? Because wasn't he with the Earthshot Prize? Um, no, he was there for the Remembrance uh, Festival. I do believe that what's been coming out from the Earthshot Prize, parts of that were filmed in advance. So he has not, you know, he, he cannot magically be in two places at once. Um, I believe the Earthshot Prize elements, some of it was filmed prior to and then released sort of roughly at the same time. Uh, so no, uh, Prince William has not developed uh, superhero powers and cannot just kind of, you know, cross between uh, <laughs> faraway lands just like that. Now let's cross over to the Montecito set and see how they have been um, remembering R Remembrance Sunday. Um, now, of course, it is important to note that different countries all over the world have their different kind of traditions when it comes to remembering um, any lost servicemen or women. Um, so it's on you. What I'm trying to say is remember a few years ago when Prince Harry was sort of he was refused permission to lay to lay a wreath officially because obviously he he's not a working royal anymore. That decision came from the very top, I think from Her Late Majesty, uh, who deemed it inappropriate to do so as a private citizen instead of sort of doing it on behalf of the nation. So Prince Harry and Meghan took it upon themselves to hire a, photograph, a photographer and be photographed and send them off to all the relevant publications um, as they did walking through a graveyard and, you know, doing what they were doing, which didn't go down very well in the UK. I can't speak for other parts of the world, but it did not go down very well in the UK. It seemed, came across very contrived, um, very self-publicising, uh, self-indulgent. All the selfs is kind of how it came out, uh, how it was perceived here in the UK, which of course is different to when you are officially representing a country uh, because you're doing it on behalf of the nation, not on behalf of yourself. So when Harry and Meghan decided to kind of publicise themselves doing their own private, private remembrance, uh, it just didn't, it didn't sit right because normal people do not publicise their own private remembrances. It's sort of a bit, and go to the extreme lengths of hiring a photographer and then pushing it out to all the media outlets. It just seemed very, like, oh, it just didn't go down very well, let's put it that way. So, you know, I think the next year they didn't really, they kept very, very, very low key. Uh, I think they, they must have had a bit of a flea in their bonnet. Anyway, this year they've been doing a few things. So, uh, and of course they have their right to do that. Um, but we also have our right to have a look at it. Uh, so Prince Harry penned a letter to bereaved children of military personnel to mark Remembrance Sunday, telling them grief is nothing to be ashamed of and losing a parent as a child is incredibly tough. So something that he does know about and I suppose does have an authority to be able to talk about. So uh, it's a letter to, of course, a charity he's been affiliated with for many years now, Scotty's Little Soldiers. And um, I think, you know, it was it was very, very nice to do it, to be honest. Harry has worked with the charity, as I've said, for many years, has now been officially named as Global Ambassador of the organisation. Uh, growing up, 
having lost a parent is immensely difficult, he wrote. But being part of such a strong and resilient community like Scotty's can really help. Spending time with people who understand what you may be feeling and who can rally around you in moments of need is something to cherish. Scotty's will be there for you year round and I encourage you to take full advantage of all this community has to offer. Uh, I see absolutely nothing wrong uh, with any of that. Um, so it is really nice uh, to kind of see. Um, on this Remembrance Sunday, I hope you carry a sense of pride for your mum or dad as they do for you, with the understanding that they will never be forgotten. It's an honour for me to be a part of this community alongside you. Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, Global Ambassador for Scotty's Little Soldiers. So I thought that was actually rather nice. Now, compare and contrast that uh, to the spectacle uh, that we saw uh, when Harry and Meghan paid tribute to US veterans at a Navy SEAL facility in San Diego ahead of Armistice Day. So, uh, let's have a look. So the Duke and Duchess, I have watched the video. Uh, they joined the Navy SEAL Foundation for the official opening of a new training base. Okay, well, that's all well and good. Uh, known as the West Coast Warrior Fitness Program Facility. That's a mouthful. Ahead of Veterans Day. Meghan ushered Harry forwards but stood in front of her husband before they watched the foundation CEO Robin King cut the ribbon. With the Duchess waving to the small crowd before the couple entered the building for a tour without saying any words. Now, of course, uh, certain words were kind of picked up. Um, so, yeah, I suppose it does look weird because Harry and Meghan kind of looked a bit like spare parts. They were announced as special guests, which I'm, you know, they may have done. Some people have speculated maybe they just rocked up and kind of hoped to be included. The, it was kind of weird. It almost looked like they were either added as an afterthought or they just literally rocked up and kind of hoped to be invited in to do something. Because it looked to me like if you are a very important guest, as high profile as Harry and Meghan, to an event like this, you would assume that it would be either Harry or Meghan being the ones or jointly that were cutting the ribbon. So it just seemed to me a bit peculiar that they were just kind of stood there on the sidelines whilst somebody else had the big pair of gold scissors cutting the ribbon. It just didn't seem right. I mean, you know, as a member of the royal family, if they were invited somewhere, they would have been the ones asked to have cut the ribbon. So it almost kind of kind of left me thinking, well, what were they there for? Um, you know, did they did they hope that they were going to be the ones that would cut the ribbon? Meghan did sort of stand in front of Harry, although Harry did hold back talking uh, to someone on the way in. Uh, but then on the way out, sort of, yeah, it just came, I don't know, it was just weird. It looked like they were just on the sidelines. Uh, Harry was kind of looking a little bit from side to side, didn't really know what to do in a capacity where he didn't really have a formal role to sort of be there. So on the one hand, you know, yes, very commendable for supporting the charities, but it almost kind of felt like, why are you there if you haven't really got anything? You're not making a speech, you haven't got anything to say, you're not cutting the ribbon. Why are you there? So I just thought that was just a little bit strange. Okay, so I thought it would be quite fun to include a segment where we actually take a look back at Catherine, now Princess of Wales, is outfits uh, and looks throughout all the times that she has attended Remembrance Sunday service. So the, her first appearance, of course, uh, was back in 2011 and uh, she joined the Royals wearing a Diane von Furstenberg coat and James Corbett hat, uh, along with Kiki McDonough stud earrings. Now, uh, she wore two poppies on this occasion and she looked very fresh and very, very youthful indeed. 2012, a year later, looking a little bit more sombre, uh, but she wore the same coat from the previous year with a different hat. She once again chose to wear her Anushka pearl earrings and 
a what looks like a kind of bejeweled poppy brooch. I think I had one similar from around that time. Uh, in 2013, her hair, she wore kind of more to the front and was very kind of wavy and curly. Um, she wore a temperly London coat and she wore a hat by Sylvia Fletcher for, made by Lock & Co. She wore her Kiki Madonna hoops along with uh, Anushka pearl drops. Her poppy pin is obscured in the photo, um, but we do think that it's literally just one poppy. In 2014, she wore an Alexander McQueen jacket. Uh, she wore a ruffled dress under her jacket, so the necklines looked slightly different. She repeated the black Jane Corbett hat she wore in 2011. She accessorised with an anemone brooch that resembles a poppy uh, and a mapping and web diamond necklace and, most notably, Princess Diana's sapphire and diamond earrings. In 2015, she wore an Alexander McQueen coat with velvet trim, a bespoke Lock & Co hat that featured a butterfly and three poppies on her lapel. In 2016, for the third time at Remembrance Sunday, she wore her Diane von Furstenberg coat that she wore in 2011 and 2012 and she accessorised with three poppies and they look like uh, potentially felt poppies and a John Boyd hat and diamond and pearl earrings. 2017, the most notable difference was actually her hair. She wore it kind of pinned up to almost make it look, to give the illusion of a bob. She wore a Dolce and Gabbana coat with gold buttons, Oscar de la Renta earrings, and a Philip Tracy hat uh, that she first wore in 2006. In 2018, um, it marked the 100th anniversary of the armistice ending for World War I. For the occasion, she wore a bespoke Alexander McQueen jacket and Lock and & Co hat and a brooch commemorating women of the First World War pinned the poppies to her jacket. In 2019, she wore a military-inspired coat, which is the same one that she wore for this year in 2023. Uh, and it was made by Catherine Walker and a Philip Tracy hat with a veil, her second time adding a veil over the years. She also wore a special pin deemed the Code Breakers brooch to honour her grandmother, Valerie Glassbarrow, who worked at Bletchley Park during World War II. She did not wear her classic three poppies cluster that year in 2020. Uh, now, of course, this was a year of the um, pandemic. She wore a Catherine Walker jacket and Philip Tracy fascinator. And she brought back the three poppy cluster, which she hadn't worn the year previously. In 2021, she wore a bespoke Alexander McQueen jacket and Lock and Co hat and accessorised with her poppy pin. In 2022, following the passing of the late Queen, uh, she was she was now the newly minted Princess of Wales and she wore a Catherine Walker coat, earrings that belonged to Princess Diana and a wide brimmed hat. And of course, she pinned the three poppies to her jacket with an Art Deco diamond brooch designed by Bentley and Skinner. And of course, uh, this year, uh, she wore a repeat, a Catherine and Walker coat that she first wore in 2019 and the Philip Tracy hat she wore in 2006 at Prince William's Sandhurst event and then she wore it again for Remembrance Sunday on 2012 and 2017 and she accessorised with Queen Elizabeth's diamond and pearl leaf earrings and her typical three poppy brooch. So anyway, all in all, I think Remembrance Sunday went without a hitch. It was really nice to see again all of these um, official duties being carried out in full, like it was the state opening of Parliament, kind of back to being done in its full and proper way. So if you've enjoyed this video and you do have any comments, please leave them. Don't forget to uh, obviously leave a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and until next time, to you all and goodbye.